My name is Idalina Bermudez. And this is my son, Ethan Bermudez. Hello. And this is my husband, German Bermudez. Hello. And this is Amalia Bermudez, who yeah. is seven. <laughs> We find out about Amalia special needs. When Amalia came out, I hey. raised her, and then automatic, the nurse and the doctor just kind of face down, like they feel bad because she has Down syndrome. And then, and how did you feel at that moment? Well, it was tough. And it was tough, but at that moment, I um, I didn't want to hurt to find out. Um, Amalia came, and then the doctor what? called us. And she was kind of, she was sad, uh, crying, but you know, after that moment. I don't want to put, we decided not to put any responsibility. No on me, no on her, just let's move on um, and face what, what it comes. Um, it's just, this is what we have been presented with. Now we have to change the plans. So I have a cousin with Down syndrome, but when you have a family member with Down syndrome and you're having your own child, it changes the ball game. The ball game changes. Now it's like, okay, what do we do now? So then the pediatric came in and said she has heart murmur. Children with extra chromosome always come with a little, what she called it, with something damaged. And I don't like that word, something damaged. Mm -hmm. And I said, a hiccup, it's better. It comes with a little bit of a hiccup. So we're like, okay, fine. So they had to monitor that. And then for them to be 100% accurate that she did have trisomy 21, they had to take the blood sample from the heel of her foot. And that was the longest two weeks ever. So once we came home, two weeks later, I get the phone call from her pediatric and say 99% she has trisomy 21. And her heart murmur can either close on its own, but 99% they have to have open heart surgery. This picture is is one of my favorite. Just because Yay. Yes, baby. Just because at eight months old she went open heart surgery. And this picture was taken at nine months that she was able to actually sit up on her own. But she just sit up for one time only. And then she just went back to just laying down. I'm not sure if she was in pain. But this is just one of my favorite ones because it's a reminder of how strong she really is. <laughs> Five hours open heart surgery and still has a cute little smile on her face. One of the most challenging um, of having a child with special need is having that child reach that goal at a certain age. So when you compare her age and her cognitive ability or her physical ability that has not yet developed, it can be a bit challenging because you expect her to master that already at that age level she was supposed to master it. That is where the challenging actually is for me. She is full of love and joy. Yeah. What makes me enjoy her the most? Her dancing. Yeah. Her love for music. Obviously having a child diagnosed with a disability, my her pediatric actually recommended early step. Um, that's when I was introduced to Central Florida Pediatric and I met Amy. Amy being a physical therapist, assign me to her staff so they will come to the house and give her therapy one time i told amy i am moving out of claremont to kissimmee near poinciana and amy is a person that she will tell you the truth whether you like it or not and she said do not go 
you will not find therapists out there, especially near Poinciana. Well, long and behold, we moved and I couldn't find a therapist <laughs> near Poinciana. So she, I called her. And Amy is always, always willing to extend her helping hand, no matter where you're at. So she had one of her therapists travel from Claremont all the way over there to give Amalia speech PT and OT for at least an hour and a half, twice a week, just so she, her body and her and her muscles can have that memory of what therapy is. A child will always learn and grow if there's a connection with that therapist or with that educator or with that teacher. Her physical therapist, Morgan, was the one that connected with her. That allowed Amalia to go from a wheelchair from the age of three yeah. to a walker from the age of five yeah. to six to taking her first walking step at the age of seven on October 3rd, 2017 at the Dream Academy at the school that's located in the same plaza with the Dream Plexus is where Amalia took her first step. My name is Morgan. I'm uh, Amalia's physical therapist assistant. When she started, when she started walking back in October, um, I had I quickly grabbed my my camera so I can get capture it for mom. Um, I was um, just filled with happiness. Um, I cried happy tears. I was excited as her therapist. Um, I have become she's become my family, and I feel like I've become their family, and we've just created that special bond. So for me, it was just as exciting as her mom and dad getting to see her walk. Um, is, the, is the way that I felt uh, when I first saw her take her first steps by herself without any assistance. So that was a very proud moment for me as her therapist. I'm not a person to cry, but that day I cried of joy because the prayer were answered. That's when I knew the prayers were answered. And I asked God on your time and on your terms, she will walk in which each walking step, she will be praising your name. And she just took that first step on her own, that the next day we had class, we, she walked in, and that's it. And that's it, no more wheelchair, no more walker. We have a sister or brother, you gotta protect it, your brother or sister. Well, oh, it's a point having fun, and training. Think? really good and I'm all in turning so good and I'm so yeah. proud of my sister. She was doing a lot of training today.